Jesus changes how we do business. Unfortunately, we live in a lawsuit happy culture where following trials has become almost a form of entertainment and using frivolous lawsuits to pursue the acquisition of wealth has become almost a legitimate career path. You know what I mean? What did you go to school for? I got a degree in how to sue someone's shorts off and make a ton of money. Oh, that's outstanding. Good for you. Is it a plug? Oh, I use it every day. Oh, great, great, great. I mean, that's the world we live in, where suing people who have money to get money ourselves has almost become a legitimate form of a, a career path. Here's a few statistics for you, just a few, to give you an idea of where we're at in our culture today. In 2006, there were over one million lawyers in the United States. Now, I thought about using some lawyer jokes this morning, but I won't. I think we have a few lawyers here this morning, so I, no jokes. But there, that's a lot of lawyers. According to the American Bar Association, that is more per capita than any other country on the planet with 50,000 new lawyers attorneys being added every year. So that number is now substantially higher than it was in 2006. In 2006, there were over 16 million, 16 million, how many did Josh say? 16 million civil cases filed in the United States. That is a ton of litigation. We live in a society that is absolutely enamored with litigation. That's according to the State Court gu uh, Guide to Statistical Reporting. While demand for legal services is on the rise across the board, it is particularly in demand in areas such as health care, intellectual property, venture capitalism, energy, antitrust laws, and environmental laws. There are many people in our church that practice medicine, and if you talk with them, it's a really uh, 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 fragile culture in the medical world right now. I mean, you can't sneeze without someone suing you, and it's just, there's just a culture of fear in medicine, and, and Two and three and sometimes four times as many tests that would normally be required are being ordered because they're afraid that if they don't do every testing possible, this person might come back and sue them. And so just the sheer amount of money we're being spent that's being spent because of fear of, of lawsuits is, is incredible. It has a, a hugely damaging economical effect. Now, the, the context of Paul in the letter he's writing to Corinthians was not much different than the Corinthian church. Listen to what Barclay says about the Corinthian culture that he was writing to. Here, the Greeks were naturally and characteristically a litigious people. The law courts in Paul's time were, in fact, one of their chief amusements and entertainments. See how much we've evolved as a culture? <laughs> All right? I mean, what, what, what has the news been dominated with the last three weeks? Court cases. And it's always so, whether it's something we think is a great injustice or whether it's uh, some local celebrity who's done something stupid, we want to follow them, or you name it, like much of the media coverage today is dominated by covering trials of certain topics, whether it be criminal or civil, that we like to follow as forms of entertainment, just like the Greeks did. In, in a Greek city, every man was more or less a lawyer and spent a great part of his time either deciding or listening to law cases. The Greeks were, in fact, famous or notorious, I should say, for their love of going to law. Not unnaturally then, certain of the Greeks who had been saved by the gospel had brought their litigious tendencies into the Christian church, and Paul is shocked. In fact, the whole thing that Paul's addressing here is, is just filling him with indignation. I mean, Paul's like, what are you doing? You can hardly believe the way they're treating each other when it comes to litigation regarding trivial issues. Now, the awesome thing about the book of Corinthians is that it is not a very idealistic book. In other words, it doesn't spend a whole lot of time or energy painting this idealistic picture of the church and what it's like, and it's so wonderful, and there's no sin here. It, it doesn't go there at all. It's, it's, it's like it's messy, it's, it's, it's train wreck, it's problem after problem after sin because it's full of people like you and like me who love ourselves more than Jesus and other people, and so we are greedy, and we're thieves, and we're litigious in nature, and we like to bite and devour and gossip and slander and get our way, and we're selfish. We don't like to sacrifice for others. Like to, we like to take for ourselves, and so it causes all sorts of problems. We're full of evil desires and sexual immorality, and on and on and on it goes, and that's what the letter of Corinthians reveals for us, that the church is full of messiness because it's full of people that God is in the process of saving. 
And so the beauty of the Corinthian letter is that it's not idealistic, it's, it's very, very realistic. 